Here's a program that illustrates the use of two parallel arrays. We have an array named names. Its length is five because we have the word Alfred in position zero, Barb in position one, and so on. And then we have another array called uh, exam scores, and it has five elements also. These two arrays are matched up in the logic of the computer programmer in such a way that the first position in names, the first element, Alfred, is meant to match up with the first number that's in exam scores. So in other words, Alfred earned a 65 on his exam. Barb earned an 80. Chris earned a 55, etc. When you use parallel arrays, they should have the same length. It would not make sense to have extra exams down here with no corresponding students that took those exams. Heaven forbid the professor or, the, uh, or some administrator at the, at the school would scramble these numbers in a messed up order because then the students wouldn't uh, have the, the correct assigned grades. When we run this program, we are going to use a linear search, also known as a sequential search, to find the lowest score. And then we're going to print out the student's name who had the lowest score. Well, let's do that with our human eyeballs. First, scanning from left to right. I equals 0, and 65 is, is a low score, so I'll, I remember that. 80 is not lower than 65, so I'm still remembering the 65. Whoa, 55, it's lower than 65, so it's now my lowest score that I see from left to right. 100, nope, not lower. 90, nope, not lower. So 55 is the lowest score that my eyeball uh, scans across there and detects. But what position was the 55 in? That's what we really wanted to know. Not that 55 was the lowest score, but what position was it in? So I've got to do it all over again. This time, I'm going to do it the right way. I look at the 65 and think, okay, that's low, so I'll remember 65. But I also remember that the 65 was found in position zero. 80 is not lower, 55, it's lower. So I not only remember 55, but I also remember where it was found. What position is the 55 in? Position two she said across the classroom because nobody answered there loud enough to get on the camera. Okay, so yes, the 55 is in position two because we start at zero. Now we continue. 100, it's not lower than 55, and 90, it's not lower. So we remember that two. That two is gold. That's what we need to know because now we have to come up here to this array, this parallel array, and we simply go to position two of it, and we print what we find there, Chris. Chris is in position two. So this last see out statement down here, see out, it prints out names square brackets two. At, um, at this point in the program, the variable index position of min value is two. Uh, when this for loop executes, just trust me that index position of min value ends up being 2. Let's run the program to make sure that Chris does print out since he has the grade of 55. Wow, look how fast the computer did that. It scanned that list and it found the 55 and it knew it was in position 2 and therefore it retrieved the name Chris and printed it out. Let's just play with the program and make sure it really works. Let's make uh, the programs uh, change the code so that Danielle has the lowest score. Instead of a 100, uh, let's change her score to 1. I execute the program again, and it should print out Danielle. Yep, it works. Uh, I don't really trust it, so let's, let's... You should always test the first and last positions of an array to make sure it works when those are either the min or the max of something. So I'm going to make uh, that 65. I'm going to make it negative 9. Alfred, this time, should have the min value, the lowest score. Okay, it works there. And another good test case would be to change this last grade to something even smaller than negative 9.
negative 88, let's say. So Ed, this time, ends up with the lowest score. So it, I'm pretty sure it works. Now let's put these back to reasonable numbers and not negatives. And let's trace the code uh, real, real quickly to make sure that you understand why it's working the way it's working. The variable i starts at 0. Min value, check this out. Instead of starting that variable at 0 like we usually do, we start at a really high number, a number that's higher than any possible allowable test score. And we start index position of min value at 0. I could start that at negative 1, but 0 is fine too. Anyway, uh, the for loop is where all the action is. This for loop executes over and over again, and each time it goes around, it uses the if statement to check to see if it's found a new lowest score. So i starts at 0, and we looked at the 65, and we ask, is 65 less than 101? It certainly is. So the, the first min value ends up being 65. That assignment statement stores the 65 temporarily in min value. Then the variable index position of min value, it gets, it stores i. Well, i is currently 0, which makes sense because that's where we found the 65, in position 0. Now the i++ is, we go around the loop a second time, and i is now up to 1, and we check to see if exam scores 1 is less than min value. Well, the exam scores 1 is an 80. Is 80 less than min value? No, it's not. So all of this gets ignored inside the if statement. And we i++. Plus plus. So now i is 2. Is 55 less than min value? Yes, it is. So this 65 now changes to 55. And then the variable index position of min value changes to what i is currently, and i is currently 2. So that 0 changes to a 2. And then i++ plus plus is to a 3, in which case we're checking to see if 100 is less than min value. No, 100 is not less than 55, so all this gets skipped. And finally, i++ plus plus is, and i ends up being 4, 4, and is 88 less than min value? No, it's not. I does technically plus plus to 5. And since 5 is not less than num students, the for loop ends at that time. Remember that num students here is a constant and it's equal to 5. And because 5 is not less than 5, the for loop aborts. We're left with these two values stored in these two variables, min value and index position of min value. The 2 is what we really want. We don't care about the 55 anymore. So we uh, see out that the student with the lowest score is, and check this code very carefully now, the square uh, names, square brackets, and because this is simply a fancy way for saying the number 2, you can think of it this time as executing names, square brackets, 2. And names, square brackets, 2 refers to Barb. No, I'm sorry, it refers to Chris. Alfred is in position 0, Barb is in position 1, and Chris is in position 2. If I run this program uh, one last time, Chris should have his name printed out, and it is. Now, this is sort of cheating. I still have a 2 typed in here. Uh, don't hardwire your, uh, your output with just a, a number like that. I need that variable index position of min value that I made up. I need that variable to be used in, in the square brackets for this program to work all the, every time. 